On air live, Lady Ada. What is this? Hello, and welcome to our weekly show and tell as we do every single week, 7 30 p.m. You, the viewer who has a Google Plus account, congratulations. You can come in and show off your maker project, your hacker space, your tools, your wearables, your costumes, your pumpkins uh, from Halloween, whatever. Any project you have that's crafty, fun, electronics y, makery, come by and show it off. Uh, we have to get out of here at 7.50, but we have a little bit of time for everybody, so we're going to kick it off with Tony Cole and then Noah and Pedro, and then uh, David and then Daniel, so please meet your mic until we call on you, and then when you're ready, give us two minutes of your demo. Kick it off, Tony. Hey, yeah, so I've got a little Raspberry Pi uh, demo. So one neat thing that happened recently, there's a new version of Processing, the kind of like creative programming uh, platform that actually Arduino and things kind of built off of. Uh, there's a new 3.0 version, and they have a native Raspberry Pi or any kind of ARM platform build. Uh, and so I'll switch over real quick to a uh, different camera. Let's see. Okay, cool. Do you see uh, the camera here? Yeah, I got Serpinski triangles. Yep, yeah, exactly. So this is uh, basically I'm running processing on uh, the Pi TFT 3.5 inch version here. And it's just running X Windows, uh, the normal Pi TFT install, and you really just download processing and run it and it works. Um, it's amazing. Like you don't have to jump through a lot of hoops here. Uh, now to get it in a full screen mode, there's a little bit of uh, fanciness you have to do. They have like a command line version you can run. Uh, but I'll do a quick little guide later on. Uh, you know, maybe next week we'll have it to uh, show people how to do it. But yeah, this is just the stock demo. This is the Coke or the Koch Snowflake, which is actually like a really kind of well-known fractal. And you can see how it works. Um, this is the first version where it renders one line, and then it renders a triangle. And each line segment, it renders with a triangle inside of it. And if you just keep iterating and going off of that, it'll build these kind of neat little patterns here. So kind of a cool demo for that. Uh, and then like real quick, I'll just jump back to... Uh, myself here. So another little retro find that's kind of related. Um, I love old computer books. And this oh, yeah. That's awesome. Programming in C. I found this at a, a Goodwill and it's from 1989 and the cool thing is it's actually neat to look at this now because you know yeah it's all 1989 computer programming but it's a lot simpler than today. Like it's not you know dealing with OpenGL and all of this boilerplate. It's you no, know it's just, just like it's just draw the pixel. In fact, this exactly this right. And best for Arduino programming because it's just straight up no graphics acceleration. You're right. drawing pixels, Z buffers, all that good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's got a whole chapter on uh, the Coke Snowflake. Uh, my favorite one is uh, the Dragon Curve. Let me jump real fast to this. So uh, I don't know if it'll show very well, but oh. it's this neat little kind of pattern here. And uh, I remember this when I was young, uh, when I was first starting to program, I downloaded from a BBS a QBasic program that drew the dragon curve. And I just, I couldn't believe that something like less than 100 lines was drawing this amazing pattern. And so, you know, that was kind of one of the things that I really liked to, to see as a kid here. And now you can do that on a little Raspberry Pi and with processing. So definitely check it out. We'll have a guide uh, in the future to do processing on the Pi TFT and just the Raspberry Pi in general. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, a lot of people have learned how to program with processing. It's like a graphical interface. It came from the Media Lab, um, uh, Casey Rees, and um, oh, can't remember the other person, but um, uh, developed it to teach people programming with graphics. And yeah, it's, it's, it's neat that now the Raspberry Pi is becoming like the place where all these learning systems are going, like Scratch and processing and Python. So yeah, you have a lot of options now on the Pi. Thanks for the demo, Don. Thanks for the demo, Tony. Yeah, and tonight we'll have um, your video that you did, a great video with um, the Pi camera. Oh, yeah, right. We'll have the guide out later this week for that, so yeah. maybe a little preview of it. So. The video yeah. the video we're going to show that. Okay. Sure, why not? Sneaky. It's lovely. It had rotating things. Yeah. Okay. All right, next, next up. Next up, Don Pedro. Don Pedro. How's it going this week? Hey, guys. It's going Happy pretty Wednesday. good. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, so speaking of Tony's uh, camera Pi uh, project, he had mentioned that on Thingiverse there wasn't really a really good one to attach it to a tripod. So um, last week we got a bunch of these cool um, little parts for connecting like a bunch of the camera part projects that we've been doing. So I built up the cool little design that lets you do that. So it's a little enclosure for the Raspberry Pi camera, and it ha uses all of the uh, little pieces to attach like the 3 8 to quarter 20 and the little ball head. Oh, these so, are the new pieces that we got in the Adafruit shop, right? Yeah. The little camera bit. Mm -hmm. So Very you nice. can use the little ball head to sort of have this on your desktop and, you know, have it be a little bit more um, stable because, as Tony was saying, it ones that are a thing of verse, all they do is just connect to something like your printer or something like that. Okay. So it's nice generic and fits yeah, all yeah. The, uh, the, the, the typical uh, quarter 20 thread. Yep. 
tripod skiff. Yeah, and the cool thing you can do is um, all the cool little uh, different uh, oh, little okay, lenses. The lenses. Okay. Yeah, so you can have like really a like wide angle one, or have like a little telephoto lens one, like a <laughs> micro <laughs> close up little lens. So how's it cool attached to the magnet? Yeah, so all these little lenses come with like a little magnet, little okay. ring. So it just taps yeah, like you, that. You you basically three D print to hold that this matching magnet. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. And then a lot of the models on there use like you know. They try to be fancy, use like these little pegs that hold everything together. So we're using screws for everything, so it's yeah. a little bit more stable and you know, it's not going to break on you. It's a really professional yeah. looking case. That's great for people who want to do. And then you can use our extra long cables. We have a cable yeah. that's a meter long, yep. so you could have the it far away from the pie if you need to. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So cool little thing you can uh, quickly three print. We'll release the files in conjunction with uh, Tony's tutorial and uh, the learning guide will be I think released on Friday. Awesome. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. And uh, tonight we have a couple of videos from you on Ask an Engineer. One is the pumpkin carving. That was super cute. Okay. And the, yeah, the other one is um, the Ultimaker video that's going to be released tomorrow, but we're showing it today. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you for the purple people eater door thing. That was very oh. nice. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. Yeah. I got some crummy mail. Like terrible mail, like bills and like gross mail. Yeah, yeah, scams. <laughs> no, just like, like eh. And then, and, then I got, and then I got that, and it was really neat. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Cool. Actually, I'm actually happy when I get junk mail instead of pills. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't want this mail. Okay. <laughs> thanks, guys. The purple people eater is really good. Okay. Okay, thank All you. All right. Tony's um, cat. Yeah. Super cute. Next up, we're going to go to David. Hello, David. How's it going? Hey, David. You've got a desktop. Hi. Yes, I got... Um, oh, oh uh, we, we can't hear you, David B. One second. Yeah, you're like super, super, super low. So if you can increase your microphone volume in some way, otherwise we can do maker charades. Maker charades. We've got yeah. A pretty good camera tell you, going tell on. you what, David, we're gonna go to Tim if that's okay, and then just like make some noise when you're when you when you're testing out your okay. mic. So we're gonna come back to you. Okay, Tim's got a great hat. Yeah. Hey, Tim, how's it going? All right. No we can't hear you either. No audio for Tim either. <laughs> But his hat's so cool. Yeah, no audio for Tim. That's weird. Can we just guess what your project is? I guess your project is you took the LED matrices, you followed Philby's tutorial, and you added little teeth, and you made this awesome hat. Yeah. yeah I can't hear you. But I can, can you hear us? Hmm. Well, we were able to converse with Tony and Noah and Pedro, so I think I don't think it's us on our side. Yeah, well, I see our little green bars. Yeah. All right, cool. that's a really cool project, Tim. Um, it, see, it speaks for itself, literally. So email supportedadafruit.com, and we'll send you an as seen on the show and tell us, like, oh, that's cool. Oh, wow, that's spooky. Whoa. Yeah. It's, that, that's a cool eye effect. That's cool. That's stuff that Philby really didn't add. This is new eye technologies. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's go over to Daniel. Oh, wait. Oh. I love above, above and beyond. beyond. Yay! Okay. Oh, it's a little, it's a, six, it's a 32 by 32 matrix. It's, I thought it was three individual ones, but it's actually one matrix. I yeah. Think. Yeah, and he glued his hat. A and B. Okay. All right. Above and beyond. Okay. So let's, um, we're going to go to Daniel, and then we'll go over to David. Let's see how Daniel's doing. So Daniel, unmute your mic and show us your project. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. You sound your, great. Your mic's great. Fantastic. My GPS watch project that I've been working on for a few months. Uh, it uses a, a Pro Trinket and the and the GPS module uh, to display the the time, the atomic sync time, uh, and my GPS coordinates. Uh, and I 3D printed an enclosure for it. I'm working on this for quite a while, and it's just in the past few days it's sort of come to here a shot of the uh, the internals. Can you see that? Uh, one second. It takes a second for it to load. Okay, yeah, we see your photo. Yeah. So this is the this is the um so I have the I have the Pro Trinket and a a 500 milliamp uh, lithium polymer battery which can run this for like 12 to 18 hours uh, with the GPS running uh, because I don't have the backlight on on the 5110 display. Um. Project. Let's see. Is the screen sharing still going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we see the battery, oh, and now it's back to you. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, that's an awesome project, and it's a watch. 
Yeah, so I can, it has a strap and can be worn on the wrist. That's it's fantastic. Awesome. That's much better than the Apple Watch. Has GPS. Uh, Apple Watch doesn't have GPS. Uh, this is already an improvement. Well, that's an awesome project, and I think it can fit an as seen on the show and tell sticker. So email support to Adafruit, and we will send you a sticker for free that you can stick on the back of your watch. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. All right. We're going to go back to David, and we're going to see how he's doing with his microphone. Hey, David. How's hey, it going? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. If you speak, if you talk a little bit louder and a little closer, then we can hear you for sure. Okay. I'll try that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Good. All right. So I made a pumpkin two years ago that used a grill igniter to uh, basically shoot flames. And then last year, I made a pumpkin that used a Siri-like interface to be able to talk back and forth with kids. So this year I wanted to combine the two, and with my audio the way that it is, you may not be able to hear it, but uh, you can see the speaker over here. And if I click flame on, it should shoot a flame within five seconds. <laughs> this is what everybody wants. This is awesome. Looks like I started the show again. All right. Yeah. So anyway, this uses an ESP8266 and a, uh, a voice playback and record module. It uses the 8266 Huzzah. I have uh, several 82612s, um, but couldn't get them onto a breadboard quite right. So I was glad that y'all came out with a Huzzah for me to be able to play with. Huzzah. That's right. Huzzah. <laughs> so this uh, uses Amazon to uh, uh, actually Elasticsearch to record the states of everything. I'm working on a home automation project around that as well. What home automation um, gear are you making or are you using? I'm using a Raspberry Pi uh, 2 with Windows 10 IoT Core as well as the ESP8266 for the distributed sensors. That's cool. Wow, you're on the cutting edge. Yeah. I was, uh, Lady Aid and I were talking about the things that we want to add to our apartment, and it, the, the consumer side is a mess. You're just better off making your own right now. Exactly. Yeah, it's like every company hates the other company, mm -hmm. so it'll never work. So yeah, like the, Amazon won't work with Google, which yeah. won't work with Nest, which won't work with yeah. Apple. I mean, well, Google and Nest work together, yeah. but they don't work with HomeKit. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> so, yeah, who knows? So we're yeah, it's, got Windows it's better to get a... Yeah, it's better to get a Pi and just run your own little server. Yeah. And have it. <laughs> so, all okay. right. This is an awesome project, and it gets extra points for uh, being on fire. Yeah. I love that. Uh, we're going to send flame you... On. <laughs> flame on. Flame on. Flame on. So yeah. we'll send you a Google... Uh, sorry, ask you on the show and tell stickers, well, email support, Adafruit, and you can stick it on your pumpkin or on your igniter or on the speaker, wherever you want. Yeah. Or you can set it on fire. I wouldn't do that, though, because it's a vinyl sticker and it smells really bad. Uh, and thanks for showing off your awesome project. Come back with more projects, too. Oh, thank you. All right. Okay, and that's everybody for tonight. Um, that was fantastic. Yeah, we finished at 7.50, which is exactly when we Yeah, all right. That's, that's the show and tell. We do this every single week. Um, we'll be here next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, show and share all your projects. Um, if you're just tuning in now, um, look for the show and tell post on Adafruit. Look for it on Google+. Plus. And we also just post a link directly. So if you yep. see the link, you can click it and you can shoot in. Uh, if there's any mic things, come back next week, whatever. Um, super cool projects. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carmen and Tony. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Noah Pedro. Thank you, David. Thank you, Daniel. We'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer in about 10 minutes. Okay. See you next week. I love Tim's hat. My yeah. Tim's hat. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Tim's hat goes well with Tony's cat. Yeah. We get to chill in. Fractal Cat. All right. All right, bye, everybody.